In this video, I'll be showing two proofs that the Earth is flat. In the first half, I'll show how there is no curvature on the horizon, even though there are those that claim that lower portions of buildings being blocked from view by the horizon is the result of curvature. The second part of the video is dedicated to showing that the horizon is very thin. It has no depth to it. And that is evidence that the horizon is the product of perspective and cannot be the product of curvature. Okay, let's go. Hi, I just want to talk about videos like this on YouTube where someone zooms in over a patch of water and uh, they actually zoom in on the horizon, which is really cool. But you can see objects past the horizon, whether it be buildings or ships or something, and the lower portions are blocked from view. Well, the average person looks at that and says, wow, that's curvature of the Earth. And, uh, you know, that's understandable. That's what we've all been taught. What I want to show is that it can't be curvature because there's no curvature on the horizontal axis. And what I want to show is that this is perfectly consistent with perspective. Um, this is exactly what we would see. So here we go. Okay, a little something of how perspective works. Uh, see the red and the yellow line. The yellow line is your eye height. Uh, the red is the ground plane. And the ground angles up. It visually angles up to your eye level. It's on a trajectory. So uh, the way perspective works on a flat plane is that... Um, where that intersects, the ground plane and your eye plane intersect, is where the horizon will form, because that's as far as you can see. You know what I mean? The ground comes up like a big wall. It's a big ramp. And when it gets to your eye level, you can't see any further. You cannot see any more ground, or in this case, any more water. You can see beyond it, but the bottom portions of things are blocked from view. Um, so that's the reality of our vision. Wow, look how that water ramps up to your eye level, and it forms a wall. Incredible zooming in on that horizon. Notice the buildings behind it, the lower portion is blocked. That's due to perspective. To explain this uh, illustration briefly, um, when they say they see curvature when they're looking at the buildings, and they're saying because the lower parts disappear, they're calling that curvature, that would be on the z-axis, that's from our eyes to the horizon and beyond. On the x-axis, these are the two that we're concerned with, the z and the x. The x-axis is the horizon, or our horizontal axis. And the x-axis is the one that we don't see any curvature on. They claim to see it on the z, but they say, oh, you can't see it on the x. Well, you should and you must see it on the x, and yet we do not. Okay, here we are looking over the bay. I have it mocked up here so you can... Um I have the X, Y, and Z axis, and I got a line across the horizon. And you'll notice I have a guy over there on the right-hand side of the screen, and he's looking across to the left. Uh, so the point of this is, is that here we are looking across this patch of water, and the guy on the beach here says he sees curvature because the building's way off in the horizon. Once you zoom in, the lower parts disappear, so he's claiming curvature on the Z axis. Yet... Um, we take this guy over here to the right, and let's say he's doing the same exact thing. He's looking across the same patch of water, and he sees buildings off in the distance, and the lower portions disappear, and he's claiming curvature. Now, his z-axis axis is our x-axis. You see what I'm saying? So um, what I'm going to do here in a second is I'm going to zoom in on this whole uh, the zoomed-out shot of the uh, horizon, and we're going to scan it from right to left, and we're going to show that there's no curvature on the x-axis. Yet, there should be curvature, and there must be curvature on the x-axis, because that would be someone else's z-axis. Like, for instance, if he's looking at our z-axis, that's his horizontal axis, and he should see curvature, because it's a ball, remember? But we don't see that. So here we go. Okay, so on the next uh, slide, I'm going to... Uh blow up the slide, and I'm going to zoom into the horizon, and we're going to put a straight line against it, and we're going to scan it from right to left, and we're going to see what it looks like. Let's go. Okay, here we go. Look for any separation between the horizon and the straight yellow line, especially at the beginning of the picture and at the end, or the right side of the picture. That's where they say you'll see curvature. So we look, and we have, uh, I put a little gap between the line and the horizon, and there we go. It looks perfect. Okay, and we're going to maintain that gap all the way across. 
you know, I can't believe they try to get away with this, you know. They say you can't see curvature, but then they see the buildings, lower portions disappearing, and they yell curvature. But here we are. Here's the horizon. Nice long patch of horizon, and let's look at the end. Perfect. Not an ounce of curvature. Okay, I just want to say a word about um, zooming in with a telescope. There are people that think uh, that I've spoken to that uh, if you use a telescope, your horizon will be further. The stronger the telescope, the further the horizon will move away from you. Well, that's not the case. Um, the horizon is determined and formed by the ground visually angling up to your eye level. As you see in the uh, beginning of the video here where he's zooming in across the water, you can see a horizon form, and then as he keeps zooming in, the horizon doesn't get further away. The horizon gets closer, and it gets bigger. He's zooming in on the horizon. That horizon is formed, whether you're looking at it with the naked eye or a telescope. Um, all of the telescope allows you to do is to see it larger. See this uh, picture on the top here? If the lines were parallel and perspective wasn't a reality, then yeah, the stronger the telescope, you could just see parallel to the ground. But the fact is, perspective causes the ground to visually angle up. And where that intersects is your horizon, and it's regardless of whether or not you're using a telescope. Concerning the convergence lines that go to your horizon and your eye level, I just want to show you a few slides from my Perspective Horizon Flat Earth video. that the parallel lines do not angle or converge towards the ground, nor do they angle towards the ceiling, nor to the left or right. They angle to the eye level of the observer. This image is a product of our eyes. These are horizontal parallel lines, yet we see them not as parallel, but on an angle towards a point in the distance. Now, of course, we know that they are parallel, but they visually are not. Here you can see parallel lines made up of bricks on the walls. The wall on the left, though, is headed out towards the horizon, and all the lines angle toward the eye level of the observer. The bottom ones angle up and the top ones angle down. This is a great illustration of how the all the lines angle to your eye position. You can't deny it. All of the lines converge at a center point on the horizon called the vanishing point. Parallel lines above it angle down, the lines below angle up, the sides angle in. The vanishing point is the intersection of the horizontal and vertical axis of our eye position. It's parallel all the way out, parallel with the ground. That's why I say you can't look down at the horizon, because the horizon angles up to your eye level. The, the two, your eye level and the ground plane, are parallel all the way to the horizon. But it's the bottom ground plane that angles up to your eye level. OK, here's a new slide. Um, here's a guy sitting in the middle of the ocean. You can see the water angles up. And on each side of him to our eye level actually angles all the way around him. Um, just like looking down that long hallway, the floor angles up to your eye position, the ceiling angles down, the walls angle in. That's perspective. Here's another one with the guy in the boat, whether he's in the hallway or out on the ocean, the ground plane angles up to your eye position. And so you can't see any ground past that point once it uh, intersects with your eye height. So items or objects beyond the horizon will be blocked, especially the ground, and then lower portions of objects beyond the horizon will have their bottoms blocked from view. And here's another one. You can see the water ramp up to the eye level, and the building beyond the horizon has its lower portions obscured. It's kind of like putting your thumb out at arm's length and putting it level with your eyes. You can block things much bigger than your thumb. Um, that's due to perspective. And the same happens here. The further away that building is, the more of it gets blocked, starting from the bottom up. Okay, that concludes the first part, dealing with the uh, that there's no curvature on the x-axis or the horizontal axis. Hello, guys. After three months of investigating on the Flat Earth model, I finally found the 100% proof that the Earth is not a globe. And that's how I found it. This video is called Go Fast 2014. You can check out the full video. Link is in the description.
basically this video is a world record for the highest private rocket ever launched into space and you can see the full flight without any cuts filmed from three onboard cameras. The highest attitude is about 120 kilometers or 73 miles. That's so amazing, I always searched for a video like this. Unfortunately, it appears that the camera have fisheye lenses, however, the earth still looks flat. I was watching this video at least a hundred times and analyzed it frame by frame hoping to find a proof for either the flat earth or the globe earth model. And then it hit me. The moon. You can clearly see the moon in this videos. Would that even be possible if the earth is a globe? If I check the position of the moon at the date and time the video was taken and it turns out that the moon would be underneath the curvature, it would prove that the earth is not a globe. The video was shot on the 14th of July 2014. Unfortunately, I couldn't find the time the rocket was launched and I would need the time to get the exact position of the moon. So I started investigating to find an approximate time when the rocket was launched. I found this video that was taken a few moments before the rocket was launched. I did two circles around the rocket. Landed safely. Now the next morning I did a short flight just before the rocket launched. Did you hear what he said? He said the next morning I did a short flight just before the rocket launched. That means the rocket was launched somewhere in the morning. It looks clear, the sun is already out, so it can't be that early in the morning. However, after the launch, they were flying in a helicopter to see where the rocket comes down. For a split second in this video, you can see a GPS device in the helicopter, which shows the time and the time is 11.40. So the launch must be between approximately 8 o'clock at the morning and 11 a.m. The rocket was launched in the Black Rock Desert in Nevada, USA. In July, Nevada's time zone is Pacific Daylight Time, which is UTC-7. Now, Let's check out where the moon was at this time. I'm using timeanddate.com and trying to find where the moon was on the 14th of July from 15 o'clock UTC to 18 o'clock UTC. As you can see, by the time the rocket was launched, the moon was in this area right over Australia. So if the Earth is a globe, it would be impossible to see the moon from Nevada because the moon would basically be on the other side of the globe. To imagine this better, there's this website called solarsystemscope.com and you can also simulate the date and time here and I also put the right date in. I'm not sure about the time zone here, so I just placed it so the moon would be above Australia like we saw it on timeanddate.com so if the earth 
is a globe and if this is our solar system then tell me how is it possible to see the moon which would be here from Nevada USA which is here it's impossible so if you say that the earth is a globe please tell me how this is possible that's it for today Okay, so I explained my view on the Flat Earth Sunset. It's different than other views. I think most Flat Earthers say it's a directional light source or a, you know, the use of perspective argument. Um, I haven't really commented on either of those, but I presented my own model, which is based on light refraction, which is in my second volume of my Zeteticism video. But I think a lot of people haven't seen that, especially Ball Earth people. So I'm going to put it the clip of that right here in this video. Just take that section of the documentary and put it right here. I personally think this is the right description. It's how you can explain the ball of the sun sinking into the horizon, you know, when you're looking at it from the beach in Lake Michigan, for example. It works perfect. It does so for the same reason that the Chicago skyline is cut off, is, is lowered when you look at it from Michigan, as I explain here in a minute. But I thought it was important just to put this clip up since so many round earthers come along and say, oh, the flat earth theory is false because you can't explain the sunset. You know, just because you can't explain something in a theory doesn't mean the whole theory is wrong. That's like saying, oh, you don't know what a Big Bang singularity is, so therefore the whole Big Bang theory is wrong. Or it's like saying, we don't know how to describe how natural selection can happen by way of telomeres and centromeres to fuse chromosome 2 and 3 so therefore the whole theory of evolution is wrong I'm not an evolutionist or a big banger but um, those that's the same just because you can't explain something doesn't mean the theory is wrong so I know that the ball earth community believes their sunset model is really clean and empirical that is scientific but 
It relies on a number of things that we can't prove without starless NASA pictures, namely Earth spinning, Earth curvature, blah blah blah. Whereas the flat Earth sunset that I'm depicting here is very, you don't need all that. It's just all you need is light refraction, which is empirical. All you need to do is look into what the radar industry is doing, and uh, you'll see that light refraction is something that all of us can test and verify that that's what happens light curves down through atmosphere this is that was the whole subject of my entire first documentaries of Titusism volume one if anybody has the capacity to get a radar gun or some sort of radar apparatus you can easily measure light refraction happening and by that very fact the flat earth sunset model is far more empirical than really the non-empirical heliocentric sunset model so rather than yelling at flat earthers the heliocentrists probably should worry about making scientific their own philosophy so anyway um, here's that clip of how the sunset happens I'm not trying to one-up any other flat earthers I could be wrong but in my opinion this is the right description maybe I'll be shown wrong in the future if so I'll admit it, but I think this is rock solid in the right description. So, anyway, here you go. Here's the clip from Zeteticism Volume 2, right in the middle of that video documentary. Light refraction. This will be a subject that comes up a number of times in this documentary, and it is the absolute key to understanding what you see in your world under the sky dome on the Earth plane. Refraction was the principal issue discussed in Zeteticism Volume 1 but I will sum it up for you here very quickly. When light travels through the atmosphere, through the air, not due to gravity, but due to traveling through the air, it is bent downward. So in other words, if you see the sun on the horizon setting, the light from it to your eyes is bent downward, and actually the sun is further along its path than you believe it to be. Here is how stuff works discussing from the globe model perspective this very phenomenon. This is a very standard, straightforward, experimentally verifiable datum as evidenced by the radar industry which involves corrections for light refractions sent out by the electromagnetic i.e. light pulse from the radar tower out to bounce off say an aircraft for example the light will bend down through the atmosphere and radar specialists have to account for this quote error unquote in order to get the correct measurement for where the plane is actually located this is also why you see from if you're looking at the Chicago skyline from Michigan the buildings of this of the Chicago skyline appear to be lowered but this is not due to curvature of the earth as discussed in extreme detail in Zeteticism volume 1 it is due to light bending as it travels from the buildings to your eye also I realize many will say oh how do we know it's not curvature like how stuff works just was saying there that's why I use that picture that article from how stuff works uh, and that was the sole topic in Zeteticism Volume 1, verifying that lowering on the Chicago skyline and, and so forth, the, you know, the radar industry's report of light refraction is due to light bending through atmosphere, not due to curvature or to something, or, you know, light, the theoretical idea that light bends around the globe for some reason. Because in Zeteticism Volume 1, we showed very clearly that there is a ge geometrically flat place on Earth, the Salar de Uni, in South America, and it has tremendous uh, lowering on the horizon of the mountains and the distance surrounding that salt flats. And if it's geometrically flat, then it uh, can be verified that light refraction is the cause of this lowering of objects on the horizon in the distance. Anyway, go listen to the Tedison's Volume 1 if you want to know more. Let's continue with this sunset clip. So we will next discuss a sunset, how a sunset works on the flat earth plane model under the sky dome. Earlier you saw this video footage where you notice how dark the sky gets from this first image to the next second image despite the fact that the sun is still quite quote high unquote in the sky. We however have seen that actually the sun has receded from us which would apparently account for why the sky has lost some of its... If you're thinking back to refraction you know that the image you're seeing actually is higher up than you believe it to be. 
the sun is actually lower on the horizon. Now, if this w video footage was to continue, as you can find many samples on the internet or do yourself, will verify, the sky will continue to darken, and when the sun becomes very near to the horizon, the sky will be dust, not very well illuminated at all. So the sun is still in the sky, and yet the sky is significantly darkening. You can still see the sun in full view. Could be even too bright for you to see with your eyes, yet the sky is darkening. So if it can darken that much while it's still in full view, well, that tells us a little bit about something after it passes out of view, and then the light is refracted down out of view. When the sun passes behind the horizon, the world approaches nighttime and will eventually become engulfed in full darkness. However, think back to what we just said about refraction. The sun actually did not go below the horizon as you saw by way of, quote, optical illusion, unquote. The sun image is actually bent, so therefore the light, the picture that you saw, was bent around some of the flat plane of the earth, so it makes it appear that the sun descended below the horizon. Just like objects on the horizon will appear lower on the horizon, not due to Earth's curvature, but due to light refraction solely. If you have any question about that, please go watch Zeteticism Volume 1, which covers this issue thoroughly. The sun is still above the horizon, it's just that you are not able to see such because the sunlight from the sun to you has been bent down out of view. Analogous to the way the plane, the low-flying plane, will be lost on the radar. If the sun keeps moving away, it will get darker and darker until eventually all of its light will be bent, i.e. refracted, out of your view so none of it will reach you and the world where you exist will be not come nighttime and you will not see any of the sunlight. If refraction did not exist and light traveled straight and was not bent down through atmosphere, you would not have nighttime in your existence on Earth. This is how a sunset works. When a sunset occurs, Hello, good people of the Flat Earth. Perspective plays trickery on our eyes, so let's break it down. This diagram isn't to scale. I am going to explain this in a simplistic way. This line is the sky. This line is the ground. Now this line here is also the sky, and this line here is also the ground, and due to perspective they meet at a distance. If you have realized things below your sight line tilt upward and things below your sight line tilt downwards. Imagine an ant on the ground or a bee a few feet above you moved away from you it will appear to disappear well before it even reaches this line of convergence because of its size. So. How big does an object or a thing have to be before it becomes equal with the convergence line? So, let's start. I'm going to say that this distance is one mile to the vanishing point, and for an object to be rendered equal to this point is five feet in height, let's say. So if an object is two times bigger, that object exactly one mile away should be visible until that object gains more distance before becoming equal to the vanishing point. Now this isn't new, but the so-called smart folks bring up things like if the earth is flat we should see the base of mountains or cities despite the distance, but we don't because of the fraudulent curve. Even with boats they bring this up. They seem to forget that the ground they stand on or the ocean of water are not transparent. In this diagram, and in reality of course, the sky has depth and we stand on the ground. So up to the vanishing point, anything below the sight line would render invisible. But the sky has depth. So if an object is above or extends above the sight line, depending on its size, it will be perceived. 
Let's look at these two dots. Are these two dots the same size? Well, that depends. Is this a 2D or 3D depiction? Because if this is a 2D depiction, then they are the same size. But if this is a 3D depiction, then we have to determine whether or not there is distance between these two dots. Because if there is distance between these dots, then the dot further from the observer would have to be bigger to cancel out the distance to be perceived as the same size. It is impossible to determine size if you can't determine the distance of said objects in the vastness of the emptiness of space. Scientists say that stars are so and so far away and they are so and so size and their mathematics are correct but it doesn't make it true. If you were to say the stars are closer, then all you would have to do to make the stars appear the same size is to make it smaller in order for us to perceive it no different. Now it doesn't make it true, but the mathematics would show and prove. Where are you going with all of this? You wave your fists and cry out in anxiety. You see, I tell planet folks that you can't use planet science and mathematics for a flat earth because it won't always work. Well the so called flat earthers, some of us, me included, use planet science because we don't have research facilities and scientists to conclude our own science. So when we use their science, we best be wise how we do so. So what if? The moon isn't transparent as some flat earthers think it to be, despite the fact that stars have been seen through it. What if the stars aren't where we think they are? What if the sun and the moon are in between the star layer? Or simply above them?